For years, Treyarch has been training your brain to act in a certain way, to help guide your decision making inside their games through overt and subvert techniques. Some of the overt techniques are weapons, map design layouts like walls, and other obvious restrictions that are placed on you inside the game. But there are also subtle tricks used by Treyarch that focus on color design and lighting. These tricks or techniques that Treyarch uses and implements inside their zombie maps help guide players through their maps, help them make decisions, or find items and features more easily without a single prompt on screen, without a single word being said. Today, I want to explore how lighting and color theory has impacted Treyarch's games throughout the years and has impacted you as a player on today's episode of The Mainframe. Lighting and color are essential to all video games. Treyarch isn't the only developer that implements these techniques at all, but they are great at when they do it. And once you notice how they do it, you might view video games differently or from a new perspective. Sort of like how directors watch movies from a completely different aspect than normal moviegoers. A director may be thinking about where the camera is placed, how the lighting has cast shadows in certain ways, or the angle in which the shot is being presented while watching a film. In contrast, most casual viewers don't care about any of the arts or science that goes into creating movies. They just see their favorite characters on screen and enjoy the ride. In gaming, developers much like directors obsess over how their games are colored and lit. Game color schemes are some of the first things you notice when you pick them up. Spyro and Crash Bandicoot games are bright saturated colors that attack the player's eyes as soon as they pick up the game, indicating a cartoon or childish feeling. On another side of the spectrum is The Last of Us and Skyrim, showing less saturated colors indicating a more dull and subdued mood given the more serious themes of those games. One of the most notable games in the industry for its complete lack of color is the game Limbo. Each game tells players something about it before they even pick up a controller. Developers love to use color, or the lack of it, along with lighting to aid the players along their journey inside games. An overt example to help get you to think differently about colors and lighting is how Uncharted uses bright yellows to indicate climbable structures. Yellows stick out in the Uncharted franchise because the colors are in stark contrast to the jungles and temples Nathan Drake explores. It helps the players know where they can climb or where to go without telling them through prompts on screen. The more subtle versions of this color guiding technique is when developers gently suggest to players' eyes where they should be going. Developers will use color theory and lighting inside games to draw your attention to focal points of interest in any given location, naturally. This can be used against the player too, when the developers decide they want to hide something from the players. Hiding important or threatening objects in plain sight become a lot easier when players are naturally drawn to the spotlight in a darkened room or distracted by a vibrant display. Today, I'm going to look at Ascension in Black Ops 1 and Zombie Chronicles to show you how Treyarch implements color theory and lighting techniques to guide players through their maps. This is an exhaustive topic that would take hundreds of hours to cover all aspects of all maps. I will not be able to cover all examples or all aspects of these theories within the bounds of this video. So I decided to focus on one of the most color focused maps in the history of zombies, Ascension. Due to the graphical limitation of Ascension in Black Ops 1, Ascension implements a much stronger use of color theory guiding the players. Zombie Chronicles took more liberties with the color palette due to the expansion of space on the new console and players' familiarity. So we will focus on the Zombie Chronicles version after analysis of the original Ascension map. Spawning into Ascension, players' attention is immediately taken when their screen goes from color to black and white as they descend into the map. Players are pushed out of their comfort zone from the start of the map by simply changing the color scheme to black and white. It was so effective that on launch of Black Ops 1 Ascension, it took the masses of players nearly four days to realize Dr. Gersh 
was talking to us as soon as we landed. Players were completely distracted by the color change and the general announcer's voice. What is brilliant is how we are greeted in the starting room. Our eyes are pulled toward the perk machine. Think about how effective perk machines are in design. Our eyes are almost always drawn to them due to their bright colors, bright lighting, and loud jingles. Perk machines are features the developers want us to use. They are telegraphing how important the perk machines are by implementing those three features on one perk machine asset. Nearly every new player will walk toward the machines to check them out, even if they don't know what they are doing or what the perk machines do. Let's take that thought a step further. Think about how effective color and lighting have been in zombie maps to tell players something is wrong when they stumble across these machines with the power off or out of the map as an easter egg. We hardly notice PhD or Mule Kick outside the map at the docks in Mob of the Dead, despite them being the same exact models. Without a bright glow or vibrant colors, they go almost unnoticed. Next, think about transit when we turn the power back off. When we approach the perks, the color around their location screams, this is important, but you know something is wrong without their color, without their lights on. All information that was communicated to the player without a single prompt. Now back to Ascension. A player who walks to Quick Revive will then turn around to see brightly lit stairs with a flashlight pointing up toward the second level after they notice nothing else pulling their attention. Treyarch is guiding the player through the map. Once they are up the stairs, let's pause to look at the second level here. There are four lights on the left side of our screen while there are only zero on on our right side. Humans tend to want to walk in illuminated areas, thus guiding the players to the left side. On our way out of the starting room, you will pick up how strongly lit barriers are. Many flicker to tell players, hey, zombies come from here, while others use Ascension's strongest color, red, to tell us this is important. We are going to be following the color red a lot throughout this Ascension video because it is Ascension's color. Every map has its own unique color palette, but Ascension uses red the most to guide players. Even though it is still in black and white on our screens at this moment, we can point out two important design choices. The first is when players come up the stairs to find a split of color in the wall. The bottom is colored red, the top dirty whitish when the color is turned on. It's still black and white on our screen. Naturally, your eye line follows the red line split which on your left runs into a red curve line behind a fence. That curve line is letting players know there's more around the corner. Take note of the single light on the left side when we exit compared to the two on the right. This is our second point to think about. One path is completely lit moving forward, while the other is partially lit, almost saying, come back later. In Zombie Chronicles, this is exaggerated as shown here. Looking to the red line on the right, it fades directly into the stairs, guiding the players in their search of power. As we come up those stairs, we are greeted by another red line at eye level. It runs almost directly into the metal platform in the distance, drawing our eyes to a flashing zombie barrier, letting the players know zombies are still here and where to go. Following the red line around the corner, we can see a separation of importance through the lighting and color schemes. The red line follows the wall on our right, while the map is more broken up on our left. Following the red line causes players to run into a flashing fire, pushing them closer to the next area. Notice how the PhD area isn't quite as alluring in black and white. Lighting wise, Treyarch is trying to pull the players toward power as soon as possible. Following the fire, we can see more flashing lights drawing us into the building, which is covered in red beams, again indicating that this place is important to the player. There is almost nothing pulling the character toward the back side of the map during the black and white version. Inside the main floor of the power building, we see a pipe. This is more prevalent in the Black Ops 1 version of Ascension, but these pipes guide players to the next point of interest. When there is color, it's even more obvious. It pushes players up the stairs to turn the power on. Ah, much better. Look how beautiful the world is inside color again. I don't have to point out every instance of a red on this map that draws your attention. But what I am going to do is highlight a few more examples so you get the general idea of how Treyarch is guiding us through maps. We now return to the start of the opening area. 
Look how much cleaner the guided paths are now that the color has returned to us. The color red is guiding the player's sight lines overtly, yet it's subtle. It's awesome. Next, let's look at PHD. So much is going on, it's hard to focus on anything in this area until we blast the highlights. This is their utilization of lighting. Once we do, we can see how the lighting of PHD, the zombie barrier, the lunar lander pad are emitting the most light. All major points of interest fighting for our attention. Transitioning back to the main floor power, now look at these red pipes with the color on. The pipes even direct players toward the Matryoshka doll easter egg if they follow both sides of the pipe. Up the stairs you will find another red pipe helping you back to power in case you forgot where it was. Looking at the back end of the map, we can see how the Ascension building is still highlighted with red beams. In Zombie Chronicles, the whole building is rusted red, screaming, Hey, I'm important. I'm the focal point. Now back to Black Ops 1. In front of us are dull orange pipes at our sight line that run into the rusted red beams of the power building, suggesting to players, if you follow the sight line, to go up those stairs. Go inside. Moving closer to the stairs, our eyes are stolen by another well-lit red colored zombie barrier dangers just around the corner moving toward the barrier we have an ambient orange red light pulling players toward the pack-a-punch machine jumping down we see a red light above the entrance to pack-a-punch telling players to come to the important place come inside now inside of pack-a-punch some really cool techniques are going on in here Treyarch has a spotlight on pack-a-punch and has moved the red lighting the important lighting to below the player what Treyarch has done is drawn the player's attention away from the zombie barriers inside this room in the hopes of trapping them when they are pack-a-punched. A common design choice in most zombie maps is making the upgrade system a risk-reward situation. Upgrading the gun takes time, just enough time to make you feel vulnerable. By changing the barrier's colors and making them more subtle, Treyarch hopes to surprise the players. Once you leave pack-a-punch, you can see that the barriers are colored differently. The red barrier is on our left, pulling us back into the map, while the barrier on the right is telling us dead end. It's blending in with its environment. Look at this screenshot. We have Pack-a-Punch's path lit by a red light in an underlighting of red below the grates inside the Pack-a-Punch room, while the red-orange glow we talked about earlier that initially drew us to Pack-a-Punch is now drawing us back out towards the only exit of the room. It is brilliant design. It is these choices that help players know, at an instance, how many paths they have available in zombies, what is important, and where to go without anything being told to them overtly on screen. Wrapping up my examples, let's go through Mule Kick's room, which gravitates us toward power with its harsh red glows, or the barrier to our left as soon as we enter, to let us know, zombies in a perk. Up towards Speed Cola, only Speed is fighting for our attention before we walk out onto the catwalk to see a pipe at eye level, leading us toward the mystery box and lunar pad. The last example I want to walk through is the path towards Stamina Up. That promised curved red line from earlier is one of the cooler ways of guiding players purely through design. As we follow the color around the wall, we get an alleyway that exposes players to four important areas of interest. There's a trap buy, a wall buy, a mystery box, and a TV that locates the mystery boxes. Players are pulled towards the mystery box if it's there in the location or the TV if they're in search of it. As soon as they turn the corner, a player will find stamina up as they're being drawn forward to these four objects of interest. And wouldn't you know it, stamina up is in front of a wall colored the same rusted red as all the important areas earlier and is different from all the walls surrounding it. Now there's plenty more to map design outside of what I have shown you in this video. For example, inside the room next to Stamina Up, we have a motion from a leaky pipe, stealing players' attention toward the console used in the Easter egg. The fires near the Claymore buy are blinking non-stop at the player, telling them you can buy an item here. And I could go on and on and on with examples. Next time you are inside a zombie's map, look for the manipulation of color. Look to see how developers are trying to steal your attention to tell you something. Once you learn their tricks, then you can guess their secrets, how they may hide objects from you, or even trick you to think a location is a safe place because of how they have set the color and lighting, but hint it towards something more sinister. Zombies Chronicles expands on these techniques tenfold with the expansion of their textures inside the game. Treyarch becomes even more masterful at implementing these techniques with expanded resources. 
as video games become more realistic, the ability for developers to become more invisible becomes a reality. They can become that guiding hand pushing you through maps. As I was gathering footage for this episode, playing Ascension back to back with its older counterpart, it made me appreciate what a masterful job Treyarch has done in upgrading map designs while staying true to the old maps. In addition to their preservation of color theory, they are extremely committed to keeping the player's immersion, like how they built this building way the heck outside the map so players could see it when they take the lander to get a sense of scale. The vastness of Zombie Chronicles Ascension is inspiring in terms of design. So inspiring, in fact, I will do a future episode of the mainframe dedicated to how masterfully Treyarch balances the space available in their maps with keeping the players fully immersed inside the game. So what do you think of color theory in game development? What if you are colorblind? What if you are blind? Maybe these techniques don't work as well. Maybe it is all psychological nonsense. Or maybe humans act in predictable ways. One of the developers on the Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonist commentary track explain that in, in almost every single one of the playthroughs they saw of a particular section, players always jumped down and knocked out a guard despite having the freedom to jump anywhere in the room. All it took was a little lighting, an adjustment of the camera position, and players acted the same way time and time again. Boom! And one last note, Zombie Chronicles does mess with a lot of the lighting techniques that were originally done in Black Ops 1. But I believe Treyarch relaxed a lot of the guiding players because of these remasters, and they also expanded a lot of their color techniques because they can make things more complicated and show off how beautiful their engine is. Thanks for watching today's episode of The Mainframe. We post a new episode every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Leave a rating and a comment if you enjoyed this video for the YouTube algorithm. They have these videos do well, then we can make more of them. Uh, and thank you to our patrons. Without them, none of these videos would be possible. I have restructured the Patreon to directly support the editors that both the viewerships love so much, that I enjoy so much, and I've made these videos so much better. So consider supporting the Patreon if you want to make sure we keep our editors around and keep these videos going. I have a poster you can buy right now, Ether and Call of Duty Zombies, if you missed that. It's a movie poster, 24 by 36 inches. It's huge on my website, redrendering.com. And we have a brand new Resident Evil poster coming out for purchase on March 31st. So keep an eye on out for that, as I will also be covering Resident Evil content here and there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed. And be safe until I see you in the next episode of The Main Fight.